Today we will be servicing a KS11 Tegra dropper post. I've had this post, I wanna say since 2015. Had it on a 29er, then in 2016, I swapped it out to a fat bike. In fact, a fat bike that I posted a video not too long ago showing me taking this one out and replacing it with a one-up component dropper. So um, when I first bought it, I had an issue where there was a bit of an oil leak and sent it back to KS that same year, that same summer. They gave it back to me after about a month. Uh, under warranty, everything worked out great and it was bulletproof since. So I noticed at the end of last winter, beginning of this spring basically, that there was or is some sag on this dropper. So, uh, and it was an oil leak at the bottom, right? So the damper inside obviously has a leak in a seal and that is negatively affecting it. And there are two ways to handle that. One, you could open up the damper, even though KS doesn't want you to, it is serviceable. I decided to do two things. One, I ended up buying a new damper. So, um, because I plan on selling this dropper, we'll most likely sell this dropper. And the last thing I wanna do is sell a dropper that, you know, I mean, I serviced, but I'm not a professional at it to say the least. Uh, it'll be somewhat of a guessing game, even though I have a solid idea as far as what needs to go on over here, because technically it is almost like a fork, right? So, or a shock, I should say. So, um, not that hard to figure out, to be honest, but still, I don't want to sell something that, you know, wasn't supposed to be serviced by people and KS doesn't want people servicing. So I will be replacing the damper inside here. I will be servicing the whole sh uh, dropper. That will be this video. And then in a separate video, I will take the old damper and service it completely. I'll be opening it up and I had to wait forever for these guys here, but there are a lot of O-rings. Now, not that I need all these O-rings, I just need one of each, basically. You just can't buy one of each, but believe it or not, it was a lot cheaper buying this whole pack or all these packs with multiple O-rings in them than it was to buy them individually, if you can find them individually. Uh, but the one that killed me was this one over here. This had to come from Asia. This came from the O-ring store here in the United States. This one over here, it took uh, quite a while to come in. I had to buy it on AliExpress. And uh, this is probably the one that's actually leaking because it is leaking from the bottom. And this is the U-seal that goes on the bottom. So I had to wait for this and it finally came in this week after about, ooh, I don't know, six weeks, maybe more. So again, that will be a separate video. This video, you will be fully, fully servicing this dropper here and replacing the damper. Let's get on to the tools needed. So this job doesn't require a lot of tools. Uh, vice, uh, preferably soft jaws, and with a size cutout of your dropper post. 10 millimeter, uh, or at least a soft jaw with a 10 millimeter cutout, right? A 22 millimeter or a 7 eighths, uh, I believe 7 eighths is the same, uh, wrench so we could take out the actuator, a pick, we're gonna need shrimp butter, alcohol, uh, lots of alcohol, and towels. So those are the parts that we will need, or the parts, those are the tools that we will need. Now let's get on to the parts in my case. As far as parts that will be needed, I will be doing a full service and I will be changing out all the parts in the dropper, right? Because again, I want to put, I'm most likely going to end up selling it. Um, and I do not want to sell it uh, with anything faulty on it, right? I mean, I want the person who buys it to have a good experience with it. It's not about the money. It's, it's about having somebody else enjoy what I think is an outstanding invention for mountain biking anyway. So um, I will be changing the bushing, even though it probably doesn't need it. We'll find out when we open it up. I will be changing the wiper that goes inside the collar over here. Now, here's something that you need to know. This is a brand new damper. It's gonna replace the damper that's in here, right? KS changed their dampers. The guide pin slots are smaller. So the one that I'm gonna take out over here has taller guide pin slots. In fact, I didn't know that until after I bought new guide pins, basically. I found that out. And I uh, bought these from Jensen. Let's see if they'll refund me on these things. I doubt it with those guys. Those guys really suck, to be honest, when it comes to stuff like that. So at the end of it all, um, these will not work for me. They are too long, you see? These are for the really old dropper post, but when you go online, you gotta be careful when ordering these things, right? Because if you go online, like let's say Jensen, they say uh, KS uh, post keys for all KS dropper posts. Uh, no, technically for all dropper posts, potentially as far as dropper models, but not for all dampers. 
The original dampers had long, I'm guessing, I don't know this, I did try contacting KS multiple times and heard back from them once prior to finding out about this issue. Never heard about them, never heard back from them again after finding out about this issue, right? So, and it was a local bike shop that told me about it, to be honest. So, uh, point B, be careful when you're ordering pins, if you want to order them and replace them. Basically, the new pins come in two packages. Why? I have no idea. My guess is because of wear. They'd prefer that this wears out since this will be hitting the bushing more often, right? So they'd rather have plastic hitting the bushing. I don't know. I'm taking a guess, right? But point B, there's going to be two pins as opposed to one. You're going to have a metal one, and then on top of it, you're going to put the plastic one. And that's how it works, right? So you got to be careful when ordering uh, pins if you want to replace your pins to have new ones in there, guide pins. Uh, here are the number, the part numbers in case you need them, right? Hopefully that comes out clear. So um, that's pretty much what we are going to need from a parts perspective in order to complete this job. So next, let's open up a dropper. So I took my vise. This happens to be a vise that uh, turns 360 degrees. And basically I turned it 90 degrees, so it's sideways, right? Took my soft jaws, put them in, made it where the 36.1 slot sticks out, right? So now I could just put this guy through there and then we could clamp him down, tighten him up. And he's not going anywhere. All right. So from here, I'm gonna take this guy and loosen. Now, there's a bit of an edge. It's a real small area. I mean, in my opinion, this whole actuator uh, it's old, they need to revise it. Anyway, uh, there's a real small area on each side. You need to put the uh, wrench in there and then crack it open, right? Just like that. Okay, so then we take this guy out. At the same time, now I never tighten these guys down hard. I never like really crank down on them with uh, wrap stretch, uh, strap wrenches. I usually untie the collars or tighten down the collars by hand, right? So let's take this guy out, right? So there we go. So now, as I mentioned, we have to separate the actuator from the actual shaft. So let's loosen this guy. Take this guy out. Let's put this guy in here. Find a 10 millimeter best way to do this probably this way mm. right mm. A little bit too much so come on 10 millimeter and you know, one more 10 millimeter there we go now let's tighten them down. Okay. Make them nice and tight. Now, again, if you do this by hand, make sure this is really, really clean. Okay? Actually, that came out pretty easy. Again, I never cranked these guys down too hard. Actually, did them by hand. So, when we take them out, here we have our piston. We have our actuator, we're gonna put them on the side. We have our piston and we have a piston head. We're gonna put him on the side. Now we're gonna take our bumper and put him on the side, right? Now we take this guy out completely. Don't need a vise anymore, or at least not till later, right? So now, what we're gonna do Turn up the camera. We're gonna separate this guy, right? Now sometimes, now I, service, I service these real often, so, uh, cause I like fresh posts, I really like fresh posts. To me it's a world of difference. So what we are going to do is separate, there we go. So sometimes what happens, this will get jammed. If it gets jammed, right? and you can't open it up. Let me see if I create a scenario where it gets jammed. Bear with me, get in there. 
Nah, he's not gonna happen now. So basically, sometimes he gets jammed, right? If he gets jammed, do not try and force this guy out. And you will get run into a scenario. If you service these often, this often there will be times where this, will, the, this bushing will get stuck in there, basically, right? So uh, do not force it out. Basically, do one of two things. Just try and slowly wiggle it back and forth until it comes out, basically, just a little bit. Don't like wiggle hard, right? Or two, what you can do is you grab, let's say, a, a screwdriver and just tap it with something soft at the edge over here as it's connected right at the edge. Just little taps, spin it, tap it, spin it, tap it, and it will give, right? So in my case, I don't have to worry about it. It's came off, so that's the housing. We'll put that there, right? So then we have our pins. And again, this is the old style pins. Well, the old style pins, the longer pins. They won't work with the new damper. I don't know how old this damper is. Well, I mean, I sent it back to them in 2015, so um, we know it's at least 2015. Right, so we'll put those, well, technically these we won't need, and I got a replacement set anyway. We'll just put the brand new ones in the package. So we'll take out the bushing. As far as the bushing, right, a good way to know if you need a new bushing is if you have it on the post and it wiggles or it moves sideways, like this one's actually in outstanding condition. You know, I don't remember the last time I changed this. I might have changed this like three years ago. If I change it at all, I do not remember. So basically, if there's wiggle, if there's a lot of play over here, then it definitely needs to be changed, right? If there's any kind of wear um, on it, if you look at it, this one has absolutely no wear at all. Like I said, this one, I don't remember when I got this one, to be honest, but they're not that expensive anyway. Um, if there's any kind of wear on it, just swap it, just change it out. If it has wiggle, without a doubt, on the, while on the post, absolutely change it out, right? So then we have the collar. We take out the collar, right? Now, there is a wiper that comes out from this collar, right? We are gonna be changing that wiper. I'll just put this on the side for now. And then, what's, uh, what you might wanna do is actually take out the seat rail, uh, uh, the seat rail collar. Only reason to do that is if dirt gets inside it, essentially it'll create space and well, basically you might get creaking, that might drive you insane, all right? So, this is the old dropper, I have the old damper. I will be servicing this thing. I will be opening it up. As you can see, there's oil. Uh, the actual oil that came out looked pretty fresh, so I'm sort of curious about that. Uh, anyway, point B, I mean, again, there's play in it. It shouldn't be doing that whatsoever uh, when I squeeze it and I'm going to be swapping it out with a new damper. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy on the side for now since we don't need him, and we will be servicing him in another video. So now it's a question of cleaning everything, right? So the big one is these be this bearing over here, okay? So you can't just take a towel and just wipe it at the top, and that's it, you're done with these bearings, right? These are roller bearings and they pack inside. In other words, th there's give to them basically, right? And what you need to do is get in there and push down and squeeze and push down and squeeze and push down and squeeze until you could get as, m as much of the old grease out of there as possible. This is actually pretty clean. So, you know what, I might have serviced it last spring basically and noticed that it, it, it compressed uh, this fall. So anyway, I don't remember. Uh, point B, you need to compress the bearings down and scrub essentially and just do it over and over and over until you can get out as much of the old grease as possible. Right? Uh, and then you also want to clean the tube on the inside best you can. You want to make sure that those guides in there as, are as spotless as possible because, uh, well, that's where the pins go up and down. So, uh, and you want it to be smooth, right? You don't want any kind of debris or contamination in there, right? But the big one, again, it's a pain in the butt, really it is, but it's worth your time since you're going through this anyway. Take a few extra five minutes, a few extra minutes, uh, and just squeeze and pull out, squeeze and pull out. I highly recommend not putting brake cleaner in here. That would work like a charm, to be honest, but this is plastic. 
And last I remember, brake cleaner and plastic, they don't do well together. So let me put the camera down a little bit. So, there we go. Uh, brake cleaner and plastic, they don't do well together, right? So, um, so let me go and clean this guy out best I can and I will be back. Okay, I am back. I just uh, cleaned this guy out. As you can see, he is uh, basically pretty uh, clean inside. Not totally spotless, but pretty close to. But more importantly, if you look at the bearing over here, it's, uh, it's, it's as clean as I could get him. Now, you're never gonna be able to get him perfectly clean uh, because again, the grease packs underneath it and we'll talk about that when we get to that point. Um, and you basically got to push and roll out as much grease as you possibly can from the inside of those bearings, right? So let's put this, oh, another area to clean is that you got the threads down here, clean these threads best you can as well, right? Make sure there's no contamination in between them. So this way, when you screw in the uh, actuator, you won't hear any of that grinding noises. There's also threads up here. So you want on the outside, clean those best you can, right? Now, Chances are you're not gonna be replacing a damper, right? So I'm gonna be replacing the damper, which means I have a brand new damper over here. Okay, so I won't need um, my old pins. In my case, I have new pins, right? Also, I'm gonna be replacing the wiper and the bushing, although this bushing is, this bushing is in great condition. Uh, I'm going to leave that, uh, but I am going to replace the wiper, even though the wiper, uh, I don't know if it looks good, actually, let's take a good look at this. So basically what you want to look for in the wiper is if there's any cuts in it, if it's, uh, well, any cracks, if it's worn out, if it's like uh, got a dent or a warp in it, right? Um, you want to clean, if you're going to reuse everything, the collar and have all other parts best you can basically make them as clean as you can right uh, before putting everything together so in this case since we are using this collar there's threads over here clean the threads best you can right or else it will be grinding from debris inside there which is just I just hate that sound to be honest um, okay, so again, you clean all the parts that we took out, clean them best you can, right? Now these aren't that bad, to be honest. Okay, let's put this guy on the side. Clean the actuator. In fact, with the actuator, what we are going to do, we're going to take alcohol. There's, on the inside over here, as you can see, there's grease in there, right? And uh, we just want to clean it out best we can. Got all the old grease from in there. What you can do is take a pick and clean it best you can from the walls of the actuator. And we're going to apply new grease in there. Make it nice and clean. Make sure we clean all the threads the actuator depending on how dirty yours is well if you need to go crazy with alcohol cleaning it feel free to do so okay let's go in there again I hate this actuator I never liked this actuator let's go in here again okay. Mm -hmm. Dummy. Okay. And you get it the smoother the operation. That's what it's all about. That's why we do this. Alright, that takes care of that one. Let's go in underneath now. Let's get this guy in here. Oh. And now we should be able to pull some of it out. And that will clean out the rest. 
Oh yeah, he's spotless inside. Okay, so the actuator's clean. Let's clean our bumper. Now I'm gonna be replacing the collar, so I won't need that one. Put the bumper over here. Now, uh, this guy here, a little bit of alcohol, grab a clean rag, and make sure the inside of this is spotless. You do not want to put them on with any kind of debris in there. Okay. It's clean, let it dry. Okay, so now it's a question of assembly. So, in order to assemble, actually, before we assemble, let me take out this wiper, let's swap them out, right? So you might be able to grab the wiper out with your hand. If not, you can take a pick. Just be careful with the pick. So we'll not be using this one again. Oops. Okay. It's a wiper, let's toss them out. Now let's clean this guy best I can. Clean them on the inside, on this wiper seat. As you can. Again, you do not want dirt on the inside of that post. You want to limit that as much as you can. Same with shocks, or else say bye bye to your post. Okay. So, we have a new wiper and part number KD3910. That's for, I believe, all. 31 point, oh no, that should be for, yeah, I don't think it cares as far as the post size. I believe this is pretty much for all dropper posts. But then again, so are the pins. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can open this guy up. For the love of God. Right. There we go. On the side. All right, so we're going to take this guy, squeeze him in. The top part of the lip sticks out, right? And the bottom part, the U-seal over here, goes inside. And there is a bed for it, and there we go. The wiper is installed. So now let's take out our new bushing. All right. Technically, I don't need to change it, but why not? And we are going to take out our new pins. I said this is not a hard job by no means. Just a little bit different than a one-up. So we got three pins, smaller pins, as opposed to the longer ones, and then we have three plastic guide pins. All right. So first things first. Ceram butter, silicoleum, don't matter. Any kind of fork grease or shock grease basically, right? So now when we put it on, don't just cover the top and that's it. What you wanna do is push down on the bearings and squeeze it and roll and squeeze it underneath. That is the goal. It does you no good having it in the walls down there, right? You want it all to be under the bearings. And in order to do that, this can be quite manual process. You have to squeeze down and sort of force the grease behind the bearings. Just like that. See there's dirt coming out from behind. That's or at least dirty grease coming out from behind. Like I said, it's impossible to get all the grease unless you use like um, brake fluid or some kind of aggressive degreaser but again this is plastic and that'll probably degrade the plastic so I wouldn't do it. I could be wrong but I wouldn't do it unless you're 100% sure. Okay so again apply, squeeze, squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll Squeeze and roll, and just keep on squeezing and rolling and fill it up. I'm 
just like that. See how jam-packed you could actually see it squeezing coming out of the sides. It's like squishing out of the sides. So that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Let's do one more round. We should be good. Just take your time with this. It's worth the effort. All right. Okay, we are good. So, took care of that, right? Now it's time to put things together. We're going to take the seat collar, or at least a seat rail collar, and let me make sure that this thing is clean. I don't have all that much grease on there. Okay, we're going to take the seat rail collar. Letters pointing down, and we're going to put him up. And if you twist him, he will fall into a slot. All right? So basically, this should be somewhere around here. There we go. Okay. So next, we'll put on the collar, right? We have the new wiper. Basically, we're going to put grease. On the inside of the collar, there's a, a bevel, basically, right? So it's like concave. We're going to fill that up with grease, right? So make sure you get this whole round part on the inside of the wiper completely packed with grease. Okay. Just like that. All right. So now we're going to take this guy and we're going to put him on. We'll use that in a little bit. Okay. So then we're going to take our bushing, just put a little bit of grease on the inside. All right. And flat part, top part up the, the uh, step part inside the post or towards the bottom, right? So we take this guy and we're going to put him up just like that. All right, so now we got some leftover grease. Now we have six pins. We're only gonna use, and we have, we have six slots and three pins basically. Well, three of each pin. So basically the way this is gonna work is we're gonna grease up every second pin slot. So it can hold the pins for us easily. And we try and insert this thing. Those the pins will keep on wanting to fall out, right? So here's one. Every second one, two, and three. Now again, I guess these newer dampers need two pins instead of one pin. So we take the metal one on the bottom. So this is the bottom of the damper, this is the top of the damper, metal one on the bottom, plastic on top, according to KS's diagrams. All right. And three. Okay. So we got all three of them in there now. So next we are going to put on our seat post. So you could try and align best you can the rear of the seat post. So this is the rear and you can put the letters. Not that it really matters to be honest with this guy. So, because uh, you're not going to see them anyway, so it really doesn't matter. You can do what you want here. But a good trick is to hold on to the pins and then just slowly twist them until it falls in and he will go in. There we go. All right. All right. I had a bit of a mishap with the GoPro. It overheated. That's the first time the Hero 11 overheated, but I am recording in 4K. Uh, 30 frames a second. Uh, I was not able to do anywhere near that for more than five minutes with a Hero 10. So I got to give credit to this camera. Uh, I am in an area where there is a heating vent above me and it did kick in. So it is a little bit warm around here now, right? So I don't blame the GoPro to be honest. I got to admit, I'm very impressed with the Hero 11. So let's finish up this job. So we put the seat post damper back into the seat post, greased everything up, right? Next, we will take our bumper, put a little bit of grease on it. 
I mean, this is literally just to keep it from drying up and cracking, right? Then we have our piston. There's two sides to the piston. We got a long side and a short side. The short side goes inside the damper shaft. And then we have the piston head over here, whatever you want to call this thing. That goes on top of the piston, right? Now what we can do is put a little bit of grease on this guy here since he will be touching the actuator, right? So grab the actuator. Now on the inside of the actuator, the inside of the actuator arm over here, we want to put grease on those walls so it could be nice and smooth, right? So grab a little grease, a little pick, put it in there, right? Just like that. Actuate them, boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. Okay, so next, what we are going to do, make sure our shaft is nice and clean. All right, because we are going to put the actuator back on the shaft. So let's grab, where's 10 millimeter? 10 millimeter hole, put this above just like that. All right. Let's get as close as I can. And now let's fit this guy through. I believe it is this hole right here and that hole right there. Nope, I'm one hole off. You know what? I bet you 10 millimeters one underneath it. That's it. There we go. All right. Again. There we go. Easier with a vise and soft jaws. So we're going to take our actuator and we are going to screw him on. Always by hand first. Right? And then once we get to the end, grab the vise, I mean the vise, the wrench, and just give him a bit of a turn. Just like that. You don't have to, do not crank him down. You definitely don't want to crank him down. Alright? So now, whoops, and just a bit of a, make sure the guy's tight, just like that, okay, so take this guy off, now put this guy up, screw him in by hand, always by hand first, okay, then, in my case, since I have the vise, 31.6, 31.6 this way. I'm going to have to open them up. Like I said, these are like $30 vices at uh, Harbor Freight. Does a great job. They use it for a lot of little things, a lot of little jobs. So I cannot complain. Put this guy in. Ooh, just a little bit more. There we go. Clamp them down. And once again, we're going to turn them just a little bit. And I mean just a little bit. You do not want to crank them down. Just like that. You just want to tighten them a little bit. Like I said, this is just this whole actuator needs to get redesigned in my opinion. And that was pretty much it. Now, if you want, you can use a strap wrench to tighten down the collar. Right? What I do is try and do it by hand, tightest I possibly can, right? Just like that. And that should never come off. Well, on its own at least. And that's it. So, we just finished it, now let's test it. I need to test it, we're just going to press down the actuator. In this case I could use this. Should go well. Oh, I probably need to fill it up with air. So I don't know how much air it came with to be honest. That was definitely a very slow return and I like fast returns. So let me go get my uh, air pump. Got my shock pump. Any old shock pump will do. We're gonna take it and we are going to screw it into the Schrader valve. Uh, Schrader. Uh, yeah, Schrader. Schrader valve on top. 
and this is no different than pumping up a shack. All right. And yeah, this is low. So I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna bring them so it won't make too much noise to about 250. Again, I like my actuators to come back quick. That air escaping is escaping from the hose, not from the actual damper, or at least from the dropper, right? So let's try that again. Oop, definitely a lot quicker. There we go. We have a fully serviced, we basically have a brand new uh, dropper over here. So, I mean, outside of the housing here, that's the only thing that's old. God, I even got new screws for the seat posts, for the seat clamps. So, uh, just to make sure that that was all good too, if I was to sell this thing. So, uh, not a hard job. Any beginner could do it. Just takes a little bit of time. Uh, again, it's more about cleaning than anything. As far as the old one, I will be opening this up and I will be servicing it. There is an oil leak in it. I'm fairly confident I know which seal it is, but still I'm gonna try and change as many seals as I can. I bought that whole kit. So uh, that will be the next video uh, for those of you that basically have a similar problem where this sags uh, or leaks. In my case, it's doing both probably because of the same reason. If it sags it doesn't, and it's not leaking, that means you have a bad seal, most likely um, um, the, um, uh, the piston seal, man, the floating, uh, oh my God, I forgot the term. Anyway, point B, you have a bad seal in there um, and that needs to get swapped out. It's a seal that actually separates or seals the separation between the air and the oil in here. So uh, yeah, so we will be servicing this, all right? So hopefully, for all you guys out there that never serviced a Integra, a KS Integra, hopefully this helps you out. Should save you a couple of bucks. Again, not a hard job. Just take your time doing it. If you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below. If you like the video, please press like. If you dislike the video, feel free to dislike. So hope everybody is uh, doing well and looking forward to the next video. Have a great day. Take care, bye.